In this video, I want to talk to you today about microphones and specifically the difference between a dynamic microphone that we have right here and then we have a condenser microphone over here. Now at the present time, you are hearing the microphone, a dynamic microphone at the present time. We'll switch between them here in just a minute. Just want to say that there are USB microphones that you can plug directly into your computer and you wouldn't need some of the equipment I'm talking about, but I want to be specific today. I'm talking about a sp specific uh, microphones <clears throat> that would be plugged into your computer through XLR cables, all right? And these cables I don't take for granted that you know what they are, but most time when I'm explaining to some pastors and churches, I tell them, you know, think about the microphones that you have in your church that are hooked up by XLR cables like this that have the pins in them, and you can bring those directly into your computer. And the only thing you need in between those to hook XLR and to take it into your computer is going to be an audio interface. I have an example here, and this is an audio interface. It's a PreSonus. It's an I2, it meaning it has two inputs, and so you would take the hookup there on the XLR and plug it into the front of the audio interface and then the back you're going to come out here USB 2 and then you're going to go directly into your computer and that's how you're going to get that nice sound and audio and that XLR into your audio. So let's mention a couple things here that when it comes to these uh, dynamic microphones that and condenser microphones, there is a difference. And this would be helpful for anybody running a sound system or knowing about audio in churches. Now for this example, right now I'm speaking into a dynamic microphone. This is the Rode Procaster. All right, it'd be a little confusing. And everything we're using here today is going to be Rode products, R-O-D-E, because I really do think they make good, high-quality products and so we're using the, right now I'm speaking into this dynamic microphone, which is the Rode Procaster. And then if I switch over, and now you're hearing me on this condenser microphone, which is the Rode NT1. And this has this little pop shield on it. And so you can kind of see a little difference there. I do want to mention I haven't done any post-processing on the audio. You're just hearing the clean audio coming directly from the microphones. And also, uh, I want to mention that I have three kids, and they are in the house right now, so you may be able to hear some background noise and so forth between the two. So that's something else that we need to talk about. So let me go back to the Rode Procaster. All right, so now we're back on the Rode Procaster. Let's talk a little bit about dynamic microphones. This is a dynamic microphone. It does not require 48 volt of phantom power. I have it plugged into channel one to my Rode Procaster as I'm using for an audio interface. It does offer effects such as a compressor and a de-esser. I have all that, that processing turned off. This is just basically the microphone that you're hearing right now. A couple things, when you think about in your church, you have those uh, Shure mics. Uh, the 58, I think, is what I'm talking about. Is uh, I'll try to put a picture up here in a minute to show you what I mean. And you've seen these used in churches uh, when the, the singer is singing and they're holding the microphone. That's going to more than likely be a dynamic microphone. A couple things I'll mention about a dynamic microphone is the way they are designed. They are designed to speak directly into the microphone. And so you can see if I back up, you can see that sound greatly diminishes. And as well as I'm speaking across the microphone to the side, you can see the little bit it's picking up as I'm coming across to speak into the side. And that's the reason it's so important when it comes to a dynamic microphone that you keep it close to your mouth when you are speaking. Give you a couple tips here. This is a pop filter and uh, our phone foam cover that helps reduce plosives. The plosives are what you hear when you hear when someone says a P and it really pops. And so uh, just a couple things there when you are speaking into them, remember that 
a good rule of thumb would be to adjust your audio levels to where we say you're hang 10 like this, which would get you about six inches away from the microphone. And as you can see here, as the video is a little uh, not true as far as the proximity that it looks like. But what I, I, a good trick I found in speaking as voiceover and taking some voiceover classes that you want to speak, as you say, off axis. And so if you don't have the pop filter, and if I speak directly into the camera, have a little off axis instead of speaking directly into the microphone, and then I'm going to get probably some plosives, even though that I have the pop filter on, so I can use those and speak off the microphone and get good quality sound. Another thing I found with this one is I can turn it this way and kind of speak over it, which works well too, and that type of thing. So that's going to be your dynamic microphone that you're going to be able, you know, you hand, it always tickles me, you hand a microphone to somebody in church, it scares them half to death. And if it's a dynamic microphone, if they don't hold it in a good proximity to their mouth, you're really going to have to drive up the fader and the gain to try to pick them up and you're going to get a lot of noise and probably some squealing and so forth. And so you can see as I move this microphone away from me, I'm about a foot away from the microphone now. And then if I was to take it almost out of shot, you can see how that has diminished the sound because this microphone is meant to be spoken into. Also, your this dynamic microphone this uh, Rode Pro Caster, I always have to think twice about that, the Rode Pro Caster, that when we're speaking into it, we're going to get that, that radio-y sound, that dynamic, uh, uh, I shouldn't say dynamic, but you get that radio uh, voice that you're speaking into. And also, just to give you a comparison here, I want to show you on this Rode Procaster, not to be confused with the Rodecaster Pro, that if I speak into it, it has certain uh, adjustments. I can choose the microphone and so forth. But one of the thing, it does have audio processing, so I'm going to turn all that on. This is the pure microphone that you're hearing right now. And then if I'm speaking right now, you can see I've turned all of the processing on. You see that boost and you can see how much audio is important in a video. Now, I'm not saying you need all this equipment that I have. This is just kind of a side hobby of mine. But this is could be a great help to you. I'll have recommendations for things in the description below to get you started out. If you're interested in that, again, I'm going to turn the processing off. And so here, just here in the clean microphone. All right, so this is the Rode Procaster. There is a Rode Podcaster, but I'm telling you this... This uh, Rode Procaster is a wonderful microphone. I think you will, you can't go wrong. Another thing I want to mention about my kids in the other room, that if you're in an environment that is very noisy, a lot of background noise, a lot of talk in other rooms, you don't have a quiet place. Like right now in the distance, I hear someone mowing with a zero turn mower. You probably can't hear that through this dynamic microphone here in a minute. You'll be able to hear it probably if you really was to drive up the sensitivity, you would be able to hear it on this condenser microphone. You do see behind me here, I do have some audio treatment, and that is to help with the echo, echoiness of the room. And so if you're in an environment that you don't have audio treatment and you don't and you in a in an environment that you might get a lot of echo or background noise or you don't have a real quiet place, I would recommend using a dynamic microphone because it's not going to be so sensitive. It's going to pick up everything in the background. So that's a couple things to say about the dynamic. Let's move on to the condenser microphone. All right, so now I'm on the Rode over here. This is the Rode NT1, not to be confused with the Rode NT1A, which is an anniversary edition. I would suggest if you do get a road you cannot go wrong with the road i love i absolutely love well i love both these microphones but the condenser microphone this is the road nt1 and it does come with this uh, pop filter here and i do have it on a a boom arm that i got from amazon for about 12 dollars <laughs> that i have hanging upside down which you can turn it different ways i found this works best for me i do have it a little above i know the shot makes it look like it's probably at eye level 
but I try to raise it, raise it on up. That really helps pick up the voice. I wish I could take it, honestly, just a little bit higher. But you have uh, here, you have the shock mount, which we did see a shock mount here on the, uh, this is the, the Rode, I always have to think about it, Rode Procaster. And we do have a shock mount there. That's the case you bump it. It'll accept some of that um, noise. This is a Rycote shock mount on the Rode NT1. And this is a condenser microphone, which has a capsule, a one inch capsule in here and inside the grill there that's picking up the voice. This is what a person that was doing voiceover would use a condenser microphone. The difference is a couple things. Number one, it's so important that you understand that a condenser microphone needs to be powered using 48 volt of phantom power. And so if you look at your soundboard or your audio interface, as we have an example here, that it does have a button to power 48 volt of phantom power would need to be on that would travel through the XLR cable to power the electronics inside a condenser microphone. So if you ever hook one up to your sound system at church, make sure that for that channel, you have engaged 48 volt of phantom power. So you can see the wonderful, uh, the sound I'm getting from this microphone as I'm speaking directly into it. This is what we call the proximity effect that you can get. And then also this is rejecting the plosives, the P's, all right, the pops that would go in there. And you can also see that as I move around it, you're getting the idea of the range of which it's picking up. And so again, unlike the dynamic microphone, yes, I am hang 10, as they say, six inches away from the microphone, but I don't have to have it right up and speak directly into it. I can be off here. And again, another idea, especially if I put this right in front of me, it would be blocking the shot. But as I'm speaking off of it now, and I'm speaking off axis, I'm getting a good sound off of it. Of course, I can always move up a little closer and get the proximity effect. So that is a, con a condenser microphone, the Rode NT1. Again, I don't have any of the processing enabled. I will do that on the Rode Caster Pro. On my soundboard here, I will engage all the processing except for a few. And so right now, you're hearing with, I have a compressor, a de which we'll talk about that at some point, a high pass filter, aural exciter, big bottom, and the processing is on. So you can see the richness, the fullness of this microphone. But one of the downsides to that is as I'm wearing these headphones in the distance, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but I hear a zero turn up the road that is running. And then also I can hear a little bit of noise throughout the house but that is one of the downsides to a condenser microphone that it's going to pick up every single sound. And if I was to fumble with things on my desk, a pen, you're going to hear that. If I was to type on the keyboard, you're really going to pick up that. So you have to be very mindful of those things. Again, I have the audio treatment behind me that is helping this room be get a dead sound. I have audio treatment in front of me also that I'm speaking into. And so if you're not in a treated room, I wouldn't recommend a condenser microphone because it's going to pick up the echoes. It's going to pick up every noise and so forth. One other thing I want to mention before I let you go is about this uh, Rode. Uh, if you get a dynamic microphone, especially this one, and you don't get the uh, Rode Caster Pro, then one of the things that I found that you're going to need a cloud lifter for a dynamic microphone because this microphone right here does not pick up, which right now you're hearing me through the road. Let me switch over again. So when you own it right here, as you can see, is I'm in the speaking into the dynamic microphone. If I did not have this hooked in and see again, I'm having to speak directly into it. And you know, I'm a little, I have to be closer and you know, I can't speak over here cause you're not gonna be able to hear me. But if you do get it and you're just using a regular, um, I shouldn't say a regular, but a, right here you're using the audio interface, then if you get that without the Rodecaster Pro, then you, I would suggest getting a cloud lifter 
and what this does is raise the it raises this microphone because it is a very dead microphone it is a very quiet microphone and so it's going to need a lift and this is the cloud lifter cl1 mic activator which raises the microphone's volume by 25 decibels but without getting all this confusing things what you can do is get into some microphones and you may have one around your church that could be used or even an old drawer that you could get out and just get you a good quality audio interface you can get them for about a hundred or hundred fifty dollars a good quality one that i'll put some recommendations in the description below and you can look at those and you can get this xlr hooked up into your computer so trust that as a help to you if you'd like to see more videos like this please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up and let me know if you have any other questions or perhaps you'd like a recommendation I'd like to do some more of these in the future because i believe it would be a great help to churches for more people to be knowledgeable about sound because it the bible says how shall they hear without a preacher faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god so we need to be heard we need good quality good quality audio so in the meantime, this is David Toller with Supplemental Seminary, and we'll see you in the next video.